So uh, this is a, a site called Brown Bluff and it's a really unique, unique location for us to land at, partially because of the, the geology here, which is so dramatic and striking and also colourful, um, also because of the environmental context. Here we're right at the tip of the Antarctic Peninsula. This is a body of water called Antarctic Sound. So it's the kind of the northernmost point of the, uh, the Antarctic mainland here. And we're right next to the Weddell Sea. It's just over that direction, um, which has a, a clockwise current in the Weddell Sea, constantly feeding cold water and ice up northwards, which then eddies and swings into Antarctic Sound here. And you can see all the sea ice here, these low, thick, flat flows of ice. And that's something we don't see in most parts of the west of the peninsula. So lots of sea ice here, which is great for the Adelie penguins. That's why we've got Adelies here, because the cold water and the ice. But one of the, uh, the most striking things about this landing, for me anyway, are these volcanic cliffs here. So this is rock, layers and layers of what they call um, vo volcanic sedimentaries. Uh, you've got basalts, hydroclastites and tuffs, and that all sounds like gobbledygook, I'm sure. Uh, but the unique thing about the eruption that formed these rocks is that it would have taken place underneath an ice sheet. So you've got a volcano erupting underneath a thick layer of ice, and that creates a very particular kind of rock, very specific type of eruption. If you compare it to having a deep fat fryer, you're making chips or onion rings or whatever, and you get it to the right temperature, then you just chuck a glass of water in. I'm sure you've seen uh, demonstrations by the fire brigade of what not to do with a deep fat fryer fire. Um, it's very explosive. That water evaporates immediately scattering the, uh, the fat everywhere and that erupts in flames. So imagine a lava cauldron, a volcano going on off underneath an ice sheet. You have the same thing going on. The lava reacts explosively. All that water and ice evaporates, creating a huge amount of steam. And you have very, very explosive, uh, powerful eruptions. Uh, one of the rocks that this creates is called a hydroclastite. So you have lots of fragments of very angular basalt, volcanic rock, mixed up in layers of very fine ash. And if you look up the cliffs here, you can see the beautiful orange of this uh, ash rock, which is called a tuff, it's T-U-F-F, -F, interspersed with layers of darker material. And this is a record of different, different um, sequences in that volcanic event, which could have lasted for years, centuries potentially even, or, or longer. Um, so you've got layers of that hard, black, very angular, rough rock full of those shattered fragments, and then layers of the very pale, but beautifully colorful, especially when the light hits it, tough for that volcanic ash rock. So quite a, quite a unique site. And this is an eruption that would have been taking place during the Jurassic. Uh, so around about the time that the Drake Passage was opening, Antarctica and South America were moving away from each other. So a lot of volcanic activity along this peripheral part of the Antarctic continent. Oceans are opening, continents are drifting apart, and these rocks here were being formed in a series of very, very dramatic, I'm sure, powerful eruptions. So yeah, Brown Bluff, it's quite a quite a special spot.